Hi, I'm Miss Lavodi, and in this video I'll be showing you how to overlay color onto your board game painting project's grayscale underpainting. This is the end result. We're going to begin with the negative space, and you might still need to mix some colors that are tints. The goal is to use the underpainting as a map for where your lights and darks belong. Um, we always mix the darker color into a lighter color. Um, remember, just depending on the size of your painting, use the appropriate amount of paint. Um, these are some color mixing guidelines to adhere to for creating your secondary and tertiary colors as well. So I'm starting here with um, a tint of a green for the background. So even though we have a light, light, light gray um, painting, underpainting in the background space, I'm still going to be mixing a tint of color because I need to match the color that I see in my reference picture. So I'm using that light green in this area and then I have a more bluish blue green um, tint of that that I'm adding in for the other side. From here, I'm moving on to using a tint of blue with some regular blue and some water on my brush to add accents to the game board. So the center circle here is my light blue and I'm going right up against the cast shadows of that with my paintbrush. Um, then I'm going to add in a darker blue on the outer ring, which is just straight blue from my paint bottle. Um, and then I, if I have a cast shadow, then I'm going to add color onto that cast shadow if it looks like it's taking on a little bit of color as well. So in this cast shadow, I definitely see some blue. So I'm adding blue onto that. Now I'm gonna add blue over the gray ring with some uh, water on my brush so that way I could still see a little bit of the blue and gray transparently mixing together. I'm adding that blue in anywhere else it needs to go. And the cool thing about the underpainting is that you can just kind of adjust color as needed. So if something looks more blue, add more blue. If it looks like it's actually just a white area, add white. Um, you get the idea. So um, the gray underpainting is automatically what's helping to tone the color. I'm not actually adding any black into my mixtures or any gray into my color mixtures at all. Um, in this area here, if the yellow looks more orange, I'm making a little bit of orange. I'm going to plug that in into the background space there. So now we can start painting in the foreground objects once the negative space is done. Um, I always like to do the foreground objects last so that they really feel like they're overlapping the background. Some shadows on the objects may take on secondary or tertiary colors, sometimes even neutrals. Um, so your underpainting will signify where you see this color change happening because you're going to see a shadow. So I'm starting with the yellow game piece and I'm using orange to represent the shadow. So I'm using orange right on top of that gray shadow and it's already painted in, in exactly the shape it needs to be. So I'm just overlapping my color. Then I work my way to a more yellow orange to transition away from the shadow. And then gradually I'll be adding back in just regular yellow hue from the paint bottle and that's going to represent those lighter, brighter areas. Looking for more little shapes of colors um, is always a great idea, so you can be more realistic. And then you can add back in white shapes of highlight last, so they overlay the color of the game piece. So that's what I'm doing in there, just little white highlights where I need them. For the red game piece, I mix more of a blue violet for the shadow and then I go in with the red first with a little bit of water um, to kind of lightly tone in the shape and then I can um, layer more red as needed. I add in the white highlights where I need them and then again go back in with some red to brighten things up. So if I need the red to look a little brighter, I need to let it dry and then layer some more on top of it so it's more densely coated. Now we can go on to the last game piece, which is the green game piece. 
For this one, I'm going to be utilizing more blue and blue green for the shadow. So that's what I've mixed for there. Um, and then I work my way out away from the more blue shadow into a more dominant green dominant um, blue green and then a regular green for the other areas. And again, the underpainting is already kind of giving me a little bit of a tone to the overall game piece and it's making my painting appear more densely layered. So it's like blocking out the white of the canvas paper. I can add back in my highlights with white and this is where I start looking for extra little details and finishing touches as well. So I'm, you know, kind of going in looking for any cast shadows I might have missed, any finishing touches that I need, little fine line shapes or words even that you want to add back in. And here's the final piece, our completely finished painting, which is going to look densely layered. It's going to have all of our color filled in. We're not going to see a lot of the white of the canvas.